Hi. Now in this video, what I want to do is talk to you about counterexamples. A counterexample is an example that just shows that a statement is not always true. And it's sufficient just to give one example. And to illustrate this, I've got a few questions here. Four, in fact, where we've got to show by counterexample that the following statements are not always true. I'll do the first one, give you an idea, and then leave you to do two, three, and four. And you can fast forward the video if you like, just to check out your answers. Now in number one, four n plus four is always a multiple of eight for all positive integer values of n. Well, we can see that's true when n equals one because you end up with four plus four, which is eight. And if n equals 3, for instance, 4 threes are 12, plus 4 is 16. That's a multiple of 8. So in order to disprove this statement, we've just got to come up with one counterexample that shows it's not always true. And we can do that when we take, for instance, n equals 2. So when n equals 2, what have we got? We've got 4n plus 4 gives us... 4 2 is uh, 8 plus another 4 is 12. Clearly not a multiple of 8. And we would say something like that, not a multiple of 8. And, OK, it's true for when n equals 3, but you'll find it's not true for when n equals 4. You're going to get this to come to 20, not a multiple of 8. But you don't need to keep showing other examples of it not working. Just one example will do. Okay, so you might like to pause the video then and have a go at number two or three or four and uh, fast forward when you come back and check out how I've done these examples. Okay? Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now for number two, if x is greater than y, then x divided by y is greater than one. So we need to come up with a counterexample then to try and disprove this. So I've chosen, for instance, if x is 6 and y is minus 3. Let's just put this in. If x equals 6 and y equals minus 3, it's not necessarily the only example, but we can see that 6, I'll put i.e., okay, 6 is greater than minus 3. x is greater than y. And so if I do that division, then x divided by y, well, what does that give us? It gives us 6 divided by negative 3, and that comes out as minus 2. And clearly, then, this is not greater than 1. All right? So we can see that we've disproved this statement. Well, let's have a look at the next one, number three. Just draw a line down there. And when it comes to number three, we've got p minus q is less than or equal to p squared minus q squared for all values of p and q. So, can we disprove that? Well, again, I've chosen these values, but you might have chosen other ones. When p equals 4, for instance, q equals, say, minus 5. Then if I work out p minus q, p minus q gives us 4 minus minus 5. And that comes to 9. OK, let's just separate this off and we'll do the other one. That is, we'll look at p squared minus q squared. And if we do that, we've got 4 squared minus minus 5 all squared, giving us... 16 minus 25 minus 9. OK. So you can see that P minus Q is not less than P squared minus Q squared for all values of P and Q. Now we come on to the last one here. Number 4. 2N squared minus 16N plus 31 is always positive for all values of N. Well, again, trying different values of n, I've chosen when n equals 4. And we'll see what happens. When n equals 4, if you substitute that into 2n squared minus 16n plus 31, then this is what you get. 
you end up with negative 1. And so you can see that it's not always positive for all values of n. So I hope that's given you some idea then what we mean by a counterexample. So thanks for listening and hopefully that's been of some help.